Greetings, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is primarily related to a test that I gave to my class on tourism, but it still can be accessed by anyone who wants to learn about the benefits of tourism and some of the problems of tourism. So today we'll be discussing mainly the problems associated. Yes, there are problems that tourism causes and we'll be discussing a few of them today. All right, so stay tuned. Alright, so I'm going to share the question on your screen right now, so you can look at it. It asks for, you know, the tourist areas in the country and um, where do the tourists come from, as well as what are some of the problems associated with tourism. Now, I know you're saying problems. I thought tourism benefited a country. Yeah, sure. A lot of people know all the benefits of tourism. For example, countries like Jamaica, they traditionally had industries like the sugarcane and the banana and of course the world-class coffee. This boosts the revenue of the country. But due to globalization and its demolishing of the preferential agreements in support of fairness and equity, these um, industries have contributed less to the Jamaican economy and tourism has risen as one of the main revenue earners and it's only second to the manufacturing industry you know uh, manufacturing industry it takes things from the primary industry and it makes it into brand new products so for example the oranges turn into orange juice or preserves or jam or something uh, milk comes from the farming industry and they make it into cheese you know tasty cheese whatever I don't mean to be calling out brands um, of course um, thread and cloth get made into clothes and maybe in the future we will also have like you know creation of cars you know some people tell me that cars are created in Jamaica already but yeah it's not as you know in China or Japan but anyways so that is how um, tourism benefits the country yeah we know that and for example in the Turks and Caicos because there is not really a sustainable agricultural industry because there is um, first of all there is a lack of um, deep soil in which you can plant things in if you look around Turks and Caicos um, beautiful white sand everywhere but the white sand is not necessarily um, able to sustain agriculture so it's like a beach everywhere you look white sand all over the places so if you are Jamaican and listening to this imagine where you would see brown soil or red soil depending on the parish imagine that all of that is just white sand beach sand that's what the Turks and Caicos is like and of course there are the running water is also a problem to be used for irrigation because the rivers are not here and mostly seawater is desalinized or desalinated um, yeah whichever that word whichever word is correct to make fresh water so tourism is king in the Turks and Caicos in fact um, tourism attracts more than 1 million tourists to the Turks and Caicos every year and it drives the revenue for this country and this is both beneficial directly and indirectly aka linkages because the money from tourism um, it directly goes into the pockets of the workers it goes into the pockets of um, the hotel and resorts owners and maybe let's say the workers have a few loans 
So when they take the pay and they repay those loans, that money actually goes into the banking system and it is circulated. So the tourist dollar is circulated far and wide. And of course, the government, um, the hotel resorts, they pay government taxes. So the government gets money from tourism. So we know that one of the benefits of tourism is that there is revenue, money. Now the next um, obvious benefit of tourism is employment. Because for example, in the Turks and Caicos, if you, uh, if you see 10 people for the day and you ask these 10 people what job they do, chances are eight out of the 10 are employed in the tourist industry <clears throat> in some way, whether it is directly or indirectly. So they may be employed directly in the hotels as receptionists, bellhops, porters, um, maids, janitors, um, grounds, crew, whatever you want to call them, chefs in the restaurant or in the hotel. They may be taxi drivers and they may actually have their craft items being sold on the hotel or in the hotel area so these people are directly employed so one of the benefits of tourism is employment now indirectly or aka linkages or yeah so linkages that's a term that we are using in tourism or you know it's is those jobs that are not directly um linked to the industry but um I'm going to give you some examples of linkages. So, for example, the hotel may use a cleaning service. So, there's a company that does cleaning and they come in and they do all the cleaning for the hotel or they, you know. Of course, um, there may be ATMs inside the hotel so that the tourists can, you know, exchange their currency or get the local currency. Like for example, in Turks and Caicos, the local dollar is the US dollar. That's what is used. So if you're coming from US, you don't really need to change that currency. But if you're coming from countries that don't use the US dollars, you might want to go to the ATM. So banking services are indirectly linked. Grocery stores, shipping companies. Of course, the hotels need electricity. The hotels need water. So the utility companies are also paid indirectly by the tourist industry. So the hotel um, pays for electricity in the hotel. Uh, the, sorry, the hotel owners pay for electricity and they pay for running water. So the utility companies benefit. And of course, you know that lady in the cook shop down the road? Yeah, she's indirectly linked to, to tourism because guess what? The workers the workers, whether it be the maids, the janitors, the landscape crew, maybe a scuba instructor, maybe the man that operates the kayak, or the person that is flying the drone that is taking those beautiful pictures of you in the kayak. Those people can't really afford to go to the restaurant and pay the tourist price. Because there is a tour, everybody knows what I'm talking about. There's a tourist price in the restaurants. The workers can't afford that price. So they go to the cook shop down the road and that lady is indirectly employed to tourism. Bet you never thought of that, huh? So tourism benefits other countries in the Caribbean. For example, the Bahamas. Bahamas receive maybe like 1.4 million visitors and that is even more than in Jamaica. Dominican Republic that is that is actually um, it is is actually on the increase it used to be a great tourist destination in the past and it kind of declined now it's back on on the rise and they are receiving many more visitors than even Bahamas and Jamaica and one of the reasons is that they are able to offer rooms at much lower rates than their competitors and therefore people are you, you just look on tiktok just look on tiktok search up dr and you see that dr is becoming the favorite um tourist destination for the young people you know there you know, everybody has a video of them vacationing in the dr but the, as i said the main part of this video 
is to speak about not the benefits but the problems. Now one of the first problems that the tourist industry can create is environmental pollution. Now some tourists believe that it is not their job to clean up after themselves. Now, you know, I know some people might be vexed when I say this, but sometimes these tourists, they have big parties on the beach and, you know, they leave their Corona bottles, their Budweiser bottles, they leave, they leave their plastic on the beach and they say that, you know, the, the cleaning crew is supposed to clean it up. Now, some of these things actually get washed into the sea and, you know, it, it pollutes the environment. Some some tourists actually you know, when they do their scuba diving they may want to break off coral they may want to take a piece of the country as a souvenir to carry back home and they may be doing it innocently but guess what coral cannot survive if you break off a piece you are actually destroying something that took many many years to be created and some of the tourists they actually don't know that the, tor the coral is actually alive yeah mm -hmm. so environmental problems may be created by the tourist industry and for those countries that have cruise ships sometimes accidentally cruise ships offload their bilge or their sewage into the waters the beautiful waters that you're swimming in so sometimes you're swimming in the waters and you see little brown things swimming with you also and then you grow stout and you run out of the water yeah sorry for that graphic image but the cruise ships sometimes release um, their bilge inside the waters of the country that they just stop over at and you know sometimes the country itself turns a blind eye because they don't want to upset or offend the tourists and therefore their environment actually suffers because of this they might instead of imposing huge fines for the environmental problems they might give them a slap on the wrist so that that encourages tourists to come the cruise ship to come again because the cruise ship might not want to come there if they think that that country is hostile to them so but if you don't protect your environment how much of a tourist industry will you have in the future because all it takes is one person to right now especially in this age it takes one person to tweet out that oh my gosh i was swimming in jamaica and there was literally um defecation or garbage in the in the water that i was swimming in ew and then your tourist industry suffers or pretty much dies because of that so that is one problem that may happen yeah environmental problems there is also another uh, problem which is not talked about very often because this is more of the on the human side than the environmental side it's called a demonstration effect and people that are seeing the tourists they are induced to imitate the behavior of the tourists what do you mean by that well if you see someone exercising or giving donations to charity you might want to do that right that's the demonstration effect but if you see people um, um, for example in the tourist industry um, they are on the beach and they're enjoying themselves and they don't seem to be working and they may be drinking and they're spending a lot of money and you think that the tourists are rich when sometimes the tourists are just regular people who have saved their money and they are now on vacation because their company has told them that this is your vacation time and if you don't take it you're gonna lose it so they are actually they actually save up for this so it's not like they are rich and they don't have jobs they're actually going back to their jobs and the demonstration effect the locals may see this and they want to emulate or imitate this behavior and they become like you know get rich quick um, they want to um, not work and stay and drink all of that you know coronas and different champagne and things that they see the tourists 
you know they see the tourists relaxing and living lavishly without working and that really sets a bad example because life is not about that you know life is based on hard honest and dedicated work another thing that has happened is that there is actually an undertone or an illicit drug industry that is sometimes associated with the tourist industry because some tourists they actually come here because you know for example they come to Jamaica and they associate because there are a lot of Rastafarians they associate marijuana or ganja and they come here thinking that everywhere everybody here smokes ganja and everywhere sells ganja so you know there is an illicit drug industry that is created to support those tourists who come here seeking thrills and drugs now some tourists are even used as couriers and they actually come here and get the drugs and transport it back home mm -hmm. yeah so you know not all tourists um, not all not everything in the tourist industry is actually good and you know sometimes it's the the tourist um, destination the hotel that becomes blamed for um, providing these illicit drugs you know tourism often creates a strain on the infrastructure of the country now hotels never seem to be um, affected by power cuts or lack of water yet citizens often claim that they have no water or have power cuts now because the country wants to best facilitate the tourist industry sometimes the local citizens are actually affected so it creates a strain on the local um, amenities and utilities and infrastructure you know the hotels have to have sufficient electric electricity and water for their visitors and the locals sometimes hmm, are actually so you know sometimes you see people in surrounding communities or communities surrounding the resort areas actually Give me some water. Just water. We want to We want to We want to drink water. Give me some water. Give me some water. Just want some water. We want to We want to live. We want to drink water. Give me some water. Wives me have to use and beard. 30 wives me use last night and beard. And my foot no wash yet, the socks me have to put on. I pray for no, no sick last night. Come my foot to that dirty. So those are some of the problems that affect the tourism industry. Um, I didn't want to make a long video. I seem to always be making long videos. So it, from environmental pollution, to the demonstration effect you can actually read more about the demonstration effect um, to illicit drug industry and you know the type of sometimes you hear tourists complain about um, crime and violence because maybe the locals see the tourists as being rich and spending and living lavishly and they want to you know rob these tourists so that is also something some some crime is actually created in this tourist area and it affects the country on a whole so you may actually see your country being on blacklists where you know they are warning um tourists not to come to your country due to violence or crime in resort areas like literally in jamaica they tell the tourists um yeah don't venture too far <laughs> don't venture too far from the the recommended areas or you may be you know at risk the u.s department of state issues travel warnings for the bahamas and jamaica 
The U.S. Department of State has issued a level two travel advisory for the Bahamas due to increased crime, including a spike in burglaries and armed robberies. The security alert also highlights incidents of sexual assault by jet ski operators. The State Department has also issued a level three travel advisory for Jamaica, citing concerns with crime and medical services. The alert mentions common armed robberies, homicides, and frequent sexual assaults at all-inclusive resorts. Travel agent Dr. Jasmine Lewis advises travelers to be cautious, aware of their surroundings, and to bring medical or first aid kits due to issues with medical services in these areas. While some travelers like Jayla Warner are not overly concerned, others like Donald Gallick emphasize the importance of checking travel warnings before booking a trip. If you still plan to travel to the Bahamas or Jamaica, consider pushing your travel date back and ensure you have traveler's insurance, including medical coverage. So those are some of the problems, you know, the strain on the infrastructure, illicit drug industry, um, environmental problems, you know, those are some of the problems. So I hope you have learned a lot from this video. And as I said, it's primarily based on a question that I gave my class. But, you know, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments and I will try best to reply to these comments or create a new video um, based on your question all right so until the next video in addicted to geography peace